two, one. Hey everyone, welcome to Filmmaker Mike and the Boys. This is episode 17. Joining me for this episode is Sequestered Jester. Hey, hey everybody. Pinhead. What's up? And Kuya. Red light, green light. Yeah. So uh, we're starting this episode off with quite the biggest <laughs> news from Hollywood. <laughs> Uh, where, hey, they make, where they make uh, dreams and, you know, uh, all these things come true. But this Mike, is, uh, big, bigger than the Mandalorian season finale? Oh, you just never know. So uh, we are, of course, living in a, a COVID pandemic world. And uh, so this one was from the sun. Yeah, that's right. The U.S. sun, uh, famous tabloid uh, paper and website. But when I saw this, they had legitimate, they had the exclusive um, leak of an audio clip of Tom Cruise. Uh, that's right. Tom Cruise on a COVID rant, they, as they put it here. Tom, Tom Curse. Tom Cruise COVID rant star warns Mission Impossible crew they're effing gone if they break rules on set. And so they have an, uh, they have an audio clip. And we're going to have Jester play it. Okay. Are you guys ready for this juicy content? Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All Jason's right. Jason's ready. I'm ready. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at that delicious food. Okay. All right. I'm going to play it. And that is it. <laughs> that is it. That if, that is it. A, if that wasn't a mouthful, <laughs> I don't know what is. You know what makes me laugh now that hey, I listen you know, to you it know, again? You know what's a mouthful? That's a mouthful. What <laughs> makes me laugh listening to it again is he sounds like me because he's got a mask on his face. <laughs> he's just super intense. Oh, God. You know, like, it's like, my gosh, man. That's when I go to sleep at night. Future of this fucking industry. <laughs> oh my gosh, guy. So uh, when I first heard it, I actually understand from a certain point of view where he's coming from, as far as an executive producer. Um, mm -hmm. It's no secret that the Mission Impossible movies 
are his babies. He finances mm -hmm. them. Um, so when the pandemic began, they had to shut down production, of course. And then in order to resume production, they had to do these protocols. So, haha, <laughs> ghost protocol. <laughs> so, <No. laughs> COVID no. protocol. That's, that's, what, that's what Mission Impossible 7 should be called. Is it 6 and 7 now or 7 and 8? Jeez, Louise. I'm, it's I'm, like 22 COVID protocol, something like that. I'm losing <laughs> track. But, um, Mission Impossible 19 COVID. I don't so, know. he did, um, he did yeah, seven. finance uh, for a cruise ship, seven hundred about, I think, $750,000 for a cruise mm -hmm. ship just for the cast and crew so they could live in a bubble so they could continue production so yep. what i what i i don't want to say like necessarily but what i get from what he's talking about is he's not necessarily talking about the money he's not necessarily talking about himself in a sense that look at me but he's re like what he's really saying is that he doesn't want production to shut down because it'll affect i mean he'll be fine there's no question but it'll affect everyone's jobs basically the middleman you know the the crew you know and all the people that you know that are working on it and that even like hollywood basically because i i'm not sure if they're currently i don't think they're filming in the u.s right now they're still um overseas uh, i think yeah, overseas. yeah they're overseas filming. right now yeah, yeah. They're filming in Europe. So, you know, the fact that they're able to, uh, granted, you know, all the, it's different over there, but the fact that they still have these protocols to follow, you know, <laughs> they don't want to get shut down. So, but yeah, the whole yelling and the cursing, that definitely is not, is not, you know, <laughs> not good at all. And well, go ahead, Pinhead. There's a way to talk to people. Right. Mm -hmm. There's a way to to be. You, you. They always talk about professionalism. Then it was when I was in film school. It was hammered in our head. Be professional, no matter what. Don't do that. Don't lose your cool. Be professional. Don't like when I was in film school. The Christian Bale incident happened, and they told us, "Do not do that at any cost. You let the higher ups get involved, and you stay out of the way. You right. don't lose your cool like that." There's a way to talk to people. Um, imagine what job, imagine if someone came in our job and came in like our boss came in and started doing that. A lot of people would be clocking out and a lot of people would be clocking him out. You, 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 there's, there's a way to talk to people. I understand he's under the gun. I understand that he's under pressure. He, he puts the lion's share in next to the studio and he, takes the lion's share in second to the studio. But like I said, there's a way to talk to people. And furthermore, <clears throat> if I, I would be remiss if I didn't say, let's not forget Tom Cruise is, and this isn't a secret by any means. We all know this. Kuya, Jester, Michael, we all know this. Everybody listening to this around the world Tom Cruise has been a noted diva. He's a bigger diva than Jester. He's a bigger diva than <laughs> Mariah Carey. He's a bigger diva than Mariah Carey. So for this behavior to be a shock to certain people should not be because he's been a diva for years. So don't be surprised by this guy because the ego and the diva mentality has been here for decades. This should not be a surprise. Yeah, I... um. I think I agree with Mike a lot on, I understand why, you know, he's probably, well, not probably, he is very, very stressed out. He's got a lot of responsibility. I'm sure, especially in the film industry, the, uh, um, I don't even know what the OSHA of, it would be OSHA, right? That's overseeing all that. I'm sure that they're breathing down the, the industry's neck to make sure that they're following COVID protocols and stuff like that. But to to pinhead's point there is a way to be a boss and and speak to people and you know this incident was probably the straw that broke the camel's back i doubt this was an incident where like it's the first yeah, time yeah yeah because like the incident according to the report 
was that uh, two employees who were wearing their masks were standing within two meters of each other. And that's why he blew up. And I was going to say, not to interrupt you, in his defense, I was going to say before I forgot, this, you're right, it has to be the straw that broke the camel's back because no, not even him, nobody flies off the handle like that on the first time. Like This is something that's been building up. This is a mental health issue that's been building up for for weeks months since they've been doing this no one no no right-minded person over one incident i don't care this is we, we no one no one flies off the handle like that over an, one incident so with that said i think the appropriate take would to be have his group meeting like he did and instead of berating and screaming at everybody Say exactly what he said in a meeting right. manner, a very professional tone. Right. And said, hey, man, I'm really sorry to say this, but I cannot cut any more slack. If I see this again, I will make, I will just fire you. And it, I'll just, I'll pull you aside and I'll say, hey, man, you're done. I'm sorry. You got to go. Like, I can't yep. make, you know, I can't make exceptions anymore. This is what I got to do. And then, yep. but he didn't, he didn't need to yell. I feel like, when you get to that point where you scream, I've lost respect for you. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. like it, it, could, it doesn't even matter what you're saying. I just instantly lose respect for you as a human being and, and or not as a human being, but I lose respect in your ability to command. That's what I mean to say. So not, not only that, the screaming, you could have pulled those two aside somewhere and had a private conversation about it instead of admonishing them in front of the entire cast and crew you don't do that that's unprofessional and that's that's embarrassing not only to them but you should be ashamed of yourself embarrassed on your own that you that you you don't do that there's a professional way and there's a human way of doing it i'm a piece of shit and i wouldn't have done that if i had a horror movie that i was working on and i someone frustrated me you know what I'm a piece of fucking garbage, but you better believe I wouldn't do that. I would pull that person to the side away from everybody else on the set as a professional. And I would say, look, one more time. I know you, I know we are trying to learn these new things in a new way, but you do this again and you're out because you're risking other people's lives. You're out. That's it. You don't make a production out of it in front of the entire cast and crew and go, you're out. If you don't listen to this, I'll rape your family. I'll destroy you. I'll do. You don't do that. You just don't do it. There's a professional way of handling things. And that's all there is to it. Yeah. yeah. So it also mentions here um, in October, uh, he and the director, Christopher McQuarrie, had to speak to so 52 days uh days after 12 people on set in italy were said to have tested positive up to 150 extras were told not to come in to shoot scenes in venice as health chiefs traced contacts of those who had tested positive and then um yeah so they had they've had like several delays Mm -hmm. and then yeah he paid 500,000 pounds for an old cruise ship for the cast and crew to isolate on And then it does mention here, it says, a source said, this is still the same article from The Sun, Tom has taken it upon himself along with the health and safety department to try to force the safety precautions with a view to keeping the film running. He does daily rounds to make sure that everything is set up appropriately, that people are behaving and working as safely as they can. He is very proactive when it comes to safety. And then they added, everyone was wearing masks. It was purely that these people were standing under a meter away from each other. It isn't known whether he saw those guys breaking the rules before or whether this was the straw that broke the camel's back, as it has been, uh, or as um, Jester, did you mention that? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Yep. And then that night, uh, when this leak happened uh, on Twitter, uh, as soon as Twitter got word, uh, Christian Bale was trending because people remembered when Christian Bale, I, and of course. you know, granted Christian Bale, you know, blew off for a very different 
reason, you know, but it reminded them of that was the last big outbreak, uh, celebrity outbreak that, that, you know, we were at least, that at least went like viral. And in those days, that was what, 2009, I want to say. Yeah. They were, yeah. 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 The most. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, it's sad to hear them. That was the ugly face of Tom Cruise. I'm telling you, like, uh, <laughs> right? And I, it, yeah, go ahead. When Dennis. you, when when you, like I said, when you get to that point, you have to take a step back, because I will say in Tom Cruise's defense, the Christian Bell situation, I could understand where Tom Cruise is coming from. Mm-hmm. Christian Bell was just being a baby, like he yeah. really was. The guy just, I understand you're trying to be a character, like you're, you're in the, but you were being a baby. I could kind of see where Tom Cruise is coming from. But like I said, there's a way to talk to people professionally and as a human being. And that's all there is to it. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's sad what um, COVID's been doing to literally everybody. It really is. You, know. you, you you got that right, Jester. It's uh it's very sad. Yeah. Yeah. So an update um from myfox8.com. Um it says Tom Cruise wraps Mission Impossible production early after rant over COVID-19 protocols. So they uh they took an earlier than planned Christmas break uh, after of course that incident and then um yeah, so that the, the they shut down production early for the Christmas break, and then they'll probably resume right uh, after that. So, hmm. yeah, and I, I do remember reading somewhere, I just can't seem to find it, that five crew members walked off the set. Yeah, yeah, I heard That's about that crew. too. Like, they walked off. They, like, hmm. they had it. Right. But, yeah, all over Twitter, you had people, uh, mostly from what I saw, reacting to – they were actually surprised that they were agreeing with the way that he was, you know, uh, ang- what, what he was angry about is because people weren't taking things seriously, you know, because, and someone yeah. even said like uh, Broadway right now is completely shut down. The fact that these people are able to work and make movies is something that shouldn't be taken for granted, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. But at what cost, like those, those five that walked off, I mean, they had, right hit their limit you know right right but then again as as you said like you know it 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 just doesn't like no one just flips off like that you know yeah it it, it should have been been that that, that, that's built up and that that's a mental health issue or it's built up and or both right because because, because, tom i'm telling you if you flipped off flipped out about that you would have flipped out at the guy in front of me in walmart because his mask (laughs) was completely down you probably would have swung on it so i did it's just a way to handle it i mean I, go I, ahead I, Kuri, i'm I, sorry no no in in that sense right like i'm thinking of it as an as him as an executive producer like again he he, he was talking about it as 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 a fact that like you know he did all the precautions all the all the things that he needed to do to protect everyone right uh, I understand where 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 you guys are saying like he should have done it in a professional kind of way, but sometimes, you know, sometimes it's a bit much. Like, how many how many times have we fucking told people in America since since uh, what February, M- March or something, wear your goddamn masks? And... So to so to that point, Kuya, like I agree, and that's why I said like I know. there, there I... are no more warnings. You're fired, and yeah. like you can either take my tone as like I'm I'm not being serious. Yeah. But I guarantee you, let one of them go, everyone straights up. But but I, yeah. I, again, I'm 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 looking at it in in his perspective, in the sense that he's then an executive producer. I'm sure the government, uh, you know, in Italy are probably giving him shit. Oh yeah. For 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 you know having for filming this and the, it it might cause a, another pandemic or another outbreak or whatever, and you know and and it's costing them a shitload of money for you know the studios are giving him you know giving him a, a, a rundown of like things that needs to be done i i can understand the, the level of stress that he's going to be in i i agree with you guys that he could have done it in the in the you know in the more professional way 
but sometimes again it, it's a bit much e even even the the guy with the coolest head even the guy with the best professionalism or the most professional out of everybody you know it it can catch up to you and you, you have you have that one fucking bad day and everybody's recording it yeah yeah, and no. I see what you're saying, Kuya, but at the same time, too, to, to end off, he knew the risks he was taking. Oh, yeah. No, no, I, so, I agree. No, I agree. I, I'm not, I'm that's not trying the to, movie I'm, business. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to defend him at all. I'm just saying, like, you know, in in his perspective, like, you know, as, as an executive producer, not not the actor, not the, not, you know, no, whatever, he has the money. Because, because the, the you know, if, if there's any fines, if there's any sort of issues that, that you know, that, that come up like if there's hospital uh, hospitalizations or if it's if there's infections if there's an outbreak it's going to be his money that's going to be involved oh, in I it that. so so he, he you know for him he he's pressured already so but again the outburst was funny i i thought it was ridiculous because the the fucking guy is five foot three and for him to yell like you know it it, it sounds like a napoleonic complex <laughs> like you know, Pin, Pinhead, Pin, Pinhead has you know, Pinhead is absolutely right that he's a diva. You know, he he wants cinematographers and cameramen to shoot it at an angle so he looks taller than his leading ladies. Yep. You guys, you guys know that. Yep, he, he has stands, to be on, than stands on a box. No, and and that's it's ridiculous on on how fucking you know whatever. I I enjoy all of the Mission Impossible movies. I'm gonna watch this one because it's, it's for me it's, it's hilarious. You We're know, all it, gonna watch it. But you know, it, oh, as, soon, as soon as we see the the movie, it's gonna be like, oh, hey, remember that time when he fucking blew up on the people here? Oh yeah. Well, but we're this, gonna try and look for what scene in the movie. Yeah, but but, but look at it. Where he blew up. But look at his what, action what, right what, here. Is that the one? Yeah, but but yeah. look at his fucking action right here. It's amazing. Look at that. He he broke his fucking you know left nut you know, on this one. <laughs> like trying, trying, trying to jump, uh, you know, the cruise ship into into the the, the dock in Venice. It's amazing. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, for for me, it, it when I first heard it, I was laughing. I was laughing my ass off just because I I know his stature. He's small. He's short. He's like Kevin Hart. And for for him to be like, meh, 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 meh. yeah, I was no, about it. He, no, he he's he's as tall as Kevin Hart. Like he's five four, five three. <laughs> Let's ask Google. So. <laughs> He's he's short, bro. Like I'm I'm not even joking. Google is wrong with this one. Hey, Kevin Hart is five four. Yeah. Let's see Tom Cruise. He's they're gonna say he's five seven, but he's not. I, I'm five, gonna guarantee. Seven. You. <laughs> I, I see there you go. He's five four, bro. <laughs> they're the same height. But I, again, you know, <laughs> it's funny. It's funny to me. I hope everybody's okay in that one. I look forward to the ne that Mission Impossible movie, like everybody else, and. And then sooner or later, everybody's going to be just like, hey, remember that one time? You know, they're going to, they're just yeah. going to laugh it off. So. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, we shall see what happens. I'm definitely yeah. looking forward to it. All righty. Moving on to Johnny Depp was blocked oh. from Jack Sparrow Return. Really? The good old Captain Jack right there in my background. Um, this is from ScreenRant.com. So Disney blocked Johnny Depp's Pirates of the Caribbean Return. A report suggests Disney even refused to entertain the idea of Johnny Depp appearing in a cameo in the next Pirates of the Caribbean movie. So that next Pirates of the Caribbean reboot, as they're calling it, uh, that movie is supposed to star Margot Robbie as the new lead. So we've got uh, Margot Robbie as the new lead of the Pirates of the Caribbean movie. So this is, uh, this is posted four days ago. So uh, it says, yeah, Disney refused to even entertain the idea that Johnny Depp could even appear as a cameo. Um, uh, let's see. In the original Pirates of the Caribbean, it earned him an Academy Award nomination and leading to mm -hmm. a starring role in all four sequels. And of course, Depp went on to become one of the highest earning stars of the early 2000s and 2010s. And then he also appeared in the Disney movies, um, Alice in Wonderland. There's two of them that they did. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, over the years, uh, the actor has been through a number of personal battles and a public lawsuit against a British tabloid, which called him a wife beater, quote unquote, ended in an embarrassing loss for Depp. As a result, the actor was removed from his most recent franchise gig playing the dark wizard, wizard Grindelwald in the Fantastic Beast series. So he was still paid $16 million for his week of work on the movie. His removal from the wizarding mo movies follows reports 
that he wouldn't be returning for the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise for an upcoming sixth installment. Instead, Disney is pursuing a reboot, of course, yeah, with, which, with, which I mentioned, um, starring Margot Robbie. So yeah, the, now the report released by T, uh, The Hollywood <coughs> Reporter reveals Disney blocked the return, citing producer Jerry Bruckheimer's desire to include Depp in the next Pirates of the Caribbean movie, even if just in a cameo role to <laughs> hand over the reins of the franchise to Robbie. The report says Disney balked, refusing to entertain the idea due to the reputation risk it would pose for the family-friendly media giant. The revelation indicates Depp's time as Jack Sparrow is well and truly over, confirming Robbie's movie is an attempt to take the franchise in a new direction. You can read the relevant paragraph from the extensive report below. So yeah, there's pretty much it's pretty much the uh, same thing. So yeah. Um, I don't know, man. That doesn't really sad. It's horrible, and I don't think those sequels are gonna do any good either. Reboot. Like I, it was I like not. they're gonna sink into like, the sea like the lost city of Atlantis. I know, and like I like Robbie a lot. She's a great actress, and then for her she just is. to be on an explosive piece of dynamite, it's a bummer. There's only one. Pirates of the Caribbean character that everybody wants to watch. Exactly. That's what that's what made Captain it huge, man. Jack, motherfucking Sparrow. Yes, yeah. thank you. That first entrance, that entrance that he did in in the very beginning, this where he was in in the, in the little tugboat. Yeah, yeah. And he he's like all proud and proud and proud, and all of a sudden his oh. fucking boat was sinking, and it was absolutely <laughs> perfect into the dock. For me, that was the best entrance of, of any fucking character I've ever seen, just because of the fact it was amazing. Yeah, because he was like, "I'm the captain." Mm-hmm. Shit, right? But no, nobody, nobody, uh, nobody else can 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 portray him, or, like, or 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 any sort of character that would that could replace him. That in that sense, and, and I hate I hate the fact that that fucking what's her name is still working as as uh, Mira Queen uh, Queen Amber Mira. Heard. Amber yeah, heard. yep. It's like if if it you know if, if the lawsuits uh, hurt uh, Johnny Depp, it should hurt her too. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what I don't. That's, that's what that's I don't understand. That that, that, that's I what don't I like, don't man. understand. Like, what's what's going on? Like, okay, you can't prove what he said is true. You can't prove what she said is true either. So if we're gonna do that, then let's have a complete crossfire where she's done and he's done. Right. Exactly. There should be no reason why he loses everything and she gets thrown up into the sky or vice versa. Just kill them both. And, I, I don't but have you're any... not going to do that because he's a man and he's a big bad wolf and he, he, it's just automatic. It's automatic. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He, she could have cut his dick off and fed it to him in his applesauce. Doesn't matter. He He, he provoked her. He provoked her. This is getting old, and it's ridiculous. They should both be penalized. If if if, if you if you're not if you don't want to be a hypocrite, they should both be penalized. Then, otherwise, but, you're a complete and utter hypocrite. Especially with the amount of dirt on Amber Heard. I mean, she's exactly. got a lot of crap exactly. that that uh, she shit on his bed. I know that yeah. that alone that alone should she should That's not. That's why they split. call her Amber Turd. That, that you know that, that alone that, and... that alone even even if it's like hearsay even if it's a rumor that alone should disqualify you from being part of fucking Aquaman two or any <laughs> fucking movie yeah and the yeah. Warner Brothers has been quiet about that I know been, and and I and I'm totally a... disappointed I'm highly disappointed oh, with Warner my. Brothers yeah because no, Warner yeah. Brothers should know better than that if I'm not mistaken the petition for to remove her from Aquaman two has reached like. I don't know if it was like over Millions. a million signatures already. It's over a million oh, now, I think. I, yeah. I thought it was almost at two million right now. Last yeah, I checked. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, like Queen Queen Mira in 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 the world of Aquaman is this much. And ladies and gentlemen, the sad so. part about it is she'll be brought up again in this podcast. <laughs> and you'll and you'll understand why once we get because it just it just blows my mind. But you'll understand why when we get down to the line, because she mm. will be brought up again. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So there's also this guy that I know. He he's very pro Disney. Loves everything Disney. 
Oh, um, get the oh, fuck out of here. And also, pro like Marvel MCU, love the stuff, perfection. Um, so go. get the fuck out uh, of here with here perfection. Go. Captain Marvel is perfect. When sure, everything, everything, everything is perfect. Here um, we go. when I um, I posted about. Uh, I'm pretty sure I posted about. Oh yeah, I posted about uh, HBO Max, um, streaming Wonder Woman. Uh, director HBO Max, all that stuff, and then the, uh, the the news broke out that the 2021 Warner Brothers movies are going straight day and date to HBO Max, and you can see them in the theaters. You can now also see them in HBO Max for no additional cost. And then he went on a tangent and said, "Oh, uh, Warner Brothers loves supporting uh, or supporting um, uh, spousal abusers," so he was referring to Amber Heard. So he was on this whole rant that he was basically um, boycotting Warner Brothers for what they're doing to Amber Heard, like all the other Warner Brothers movies, which doesn't make sense, right? You, if you had something against a specific actor, in this case, you would only boycott her, her stuff. The, the person, yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. if, if she's in a movie or she's in a show, right? But he's like, oh, yeah. all Warner Brothers. I'm like... That doesn't make sense. So, so your boy's hiding, dude. Because he, because he, yeah, exactly. Because he, he's, he's in full support of Johnny Depp. But now that this Disney thing came out and they're blocking Johnny Depp, what did quiet. he say? No. He's been quiet. I don't know. Oh, I, you should, you should fucking call uh, him out. Maybe I should forward it to him. Maybe I should forward hey, to him and be like, "What do you no, think?" No, forward, he's forward to now? him at at uh, at me and at uh, you know, Pinhead. And uh, like, we'll your have bitch that. ass is silent now. <laughs> you're sitting yeah. there like a baby sucking your thumb now because your hero did the same thing. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. Because <laughs> I mean, we, we got to uh, hold everyone accountable, right? Even these large exactly. studios. Exactly. I mean, when they do right, hey, you guys did great. Disney yeah. doing uh, The Mandalorian, Lucasfilm, great stuff. But with this one with Johnny Depp and like blocking him, like, <laughs> that's not cool. So, yeah. You know, it, it's going to kill the, It's going to kill that franchise, you know. That's, yeah. that's the end of that franchise. It really will. Pretty much. Like the franchise was already sinking somewhat with him. Uh, you take him out of the equation completely, it's going to whoop. Yep. You can call it Chernobyl. And, and that's what a lot of people were also saying, that they should just end it. They should not even try to reboot it or exactly. you know, end it. So just, just, just do an offshoot of something. They don't, don't call it Pirates of the Caribbean because everybody knows – like in in the in the realm of those movies, Jack Sparrow is is you know the the person in the Pir- Pirates of the Caribbean, right? Pir- just put just call it pirates, just call, call it something, call it whatever, right? Exactly. Yeah. Still uh, really don't do well though because the foundation had was like the center of attention was Johnny. I just yeah. that's why I don't think it's gonna do well. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's gonna. Yeah, sing. And it got ruined by that fucking dumbass love story that like nobody cared about. That's what I hate about that franchise is that that love story between uh, um, Elizabeth Turner, yeah, or Elizabeth Swan and Will Turner. Swan, Swan and Turner. That yeah. actually worked. I think it worked. Yeah, I was gonna say. I thought that uh, was fun. Mm. Yeah, it was, it was about Jack Sparrow, man. Yeah, but then you start off with the story of the kids in the boat in the ship. That's where they first met. Before we even meet Jack Sparrow, I know, but it's all about Jack Sparrow, like I said. I think he was holding them together. Sure, the story. Yeah. So you drank all my rum. What, what happened to my rum? Why is the rum gone? <laughs> <laughs> you burned it all. Burn rum. <laughs> yeah, that. I oh god, I, I, can't I, believe... I, I can't picture anybody else fucking doing anything like that, dude. That first film, I never got to see it in the theater, but I did see it on DVD. Um, a, a classmate of mine, we Same. were in. A, we were in a video broadcast class and he showed it to me and I was blown away. I was like, this Amazing. is, this is awesome. So ever since the, the second and the third and every, all the other sequels, like I always watched it in the theater. So I, I looked forward to, like when it first came out, I looked forward to it because it, that was my favorite ride in, uh, in fucking Disneyland. It was Pirates of the Caribbean. Right. I, I, I would risk like waiting two hours, three hours. I didn't give a shit. You know, like you know, people can have Splash Mountain, can they can have a uh, you know, 
uh, you know, Thunder Mountain Railroad and all that stuff, and, and, and Indiana Jones and Space Mountain, they can have all that. I want Parrot Pies of the Caribbean. Like I, I, I'll ride it like I'll, every single time. So it was, it was. I don't know. This is this is like, it's sad. It's sad for me. Uh, this is like a, a sad uh, thing. Hopefully they they change their mind or or, it not just not do any more reboots <laughs> about mm-hmm. it. Well, so. that's not gonna happen. Yeah. We shall see. We shall wait and see. Alrighty. So moving on. This one is from the Hollywood Reporter dot com. Uh, the original Boba Fett, Jeremy Bullock, has passed away from uh, health complications. Um, and he was living for several years with Parkinson's disease. So he was 75 years old. And uh, wow. so he died Thursday uh, in England. So, yeah. RIP. He, yeah, that sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but. From from everyone that I saw like uh, posting about him, they got to meet him at cons, and even uh, Daniel Logan, who played young Boba Fett, um, and other like even Mark Hamill tweeted about him. Like he was absolutely great. Um, of course, he made he played Boba Fett in The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, uh, so he really made that character like popular, and it was quite fitting that you know he passed. That's true. Um, just what a few weeks after, like Boba Fett made his official uh, entrance again, return yeah. to the Mandalorian. Yeah. So, uh, rest in peace, mm-hmm. to Jeremy Bullock. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. In, moving on, we've got uh, Pinhead. He's going to be talking about the Stand premiere. Go ahead, Pinhead. So. <sighs> The stand premiered on CBS All Access this Thursday. I'm thinking, from what I'm seeing, it's going to be every Thursday. I was hoping that would have, like the original one back in 94 when I was a kid, they were going to do it on the major days. So Thursday, you can't do it on Friday or Saturday because no one is watching. And Sunday football's there, so you would put it on Sunday. But they're not doing that. They're doing it every Thursday, which is fine. But so far, the first episode has been – it's hard because the first episode, they take every – they take huge chunks of the book out and throw it in the garbage. I understand that for adaptations, you're not going to get – every single thing but so far right off the bat the 1994 version of the stand has been better so far because they didn't they didn't take large chunks of the book out and kick them in the garbage and the parts of the books that the parts of the book that they did keep in they they've changed it completely like uh for example there's a there's this great thing that happens with a character named Franny in here. And she has a, she has a conversation with her mother about having a baby. And it's, a, it's, and it's initially about a woman's right to choose and what she's going to do with the baby. That, that's completely gutted out and thrown out. And now Franny's a completely, she's a spoiled little brat. And there's just, there's just Cyclops is now, like a major part of the book or a major part of the series, James Marsden is Stu Redman and he is absolutely wooden. I mean, you could have got a box of shoes that was better than this. The acting is subpar. The writing is trash. And I'm trying very very hard not to get mad about it because this is only the first episode but so far we're not off to a good start I mean this is bad and that brings me to what I said earlier I know further down the line they've really screwed some of the characters up Amber Heard she will be in this she will be another major character Nadine Cross um, the decision to turn Larry Underwood black. That's a problem for me because in the book, normally I wouldn't care because 
I'm all for diversity and getting getting roles out there. But in this instance, it, it, it's, it was a stupid idea because Larry being white, there's a significance in the book. So I'm not going to go into that because to spoil it, but there's a reason why Larry's white and it's, just, it's, 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 it's significant in the book. And they just, they throw that out. So we'll, we'll see what happens. I'm calling it now. I will say this right now. I can guarantee it. By the end of this, by the end of this series, the two highlights will be Whoopi Goldberg as Sister Abigail, and the other highlight will be J. Jonah Jameson's cameo in the stand. You know, the man J.K. Simmons is in there. That's those are the two highlights that'll have been throughout this whole series. It, it's 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 not looking good. It's not looking good at all. For you Stan fans who really appreciate that this is Stephen King's masterpiece, if you agree with me, like I, I think this is Stephen King's masterpiece, you're not going to be happy. It, 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 it's going to be a long haul. I can, it's, it's, it's not going to be any Mandalorian. It's, it's, it's going to be very difficult to get through. So it, it's bad. My grandmother is an expert on this because she read it multiple times and she, she, she's not even liking it so all right are you we'll gonna try to happens. are you gonna try to do the the, the three episode thing or give, give a go i'm going to i'm gonna give i'm gonna go through the whole thing i i have to i'm not even if even if i know that the next two episodes are trash i i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna go through it okay. because i love the stand so much i have to know I just, I have to see it. So I, I'm going to go through the whole thing. It's not even, even if it's trash, I'm going to go through the whole thing. Okay. So that's my, that that's my uh, pre-review on the stand. I, we may get more, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, it's not looking good, folks. It's not looking good at all. So we'll see what happens. All righty. So next up, we've got from CBR.com, uh, Yu Yu Hakusho, as it's known here. I know it as Ghost Fighter. Uh, so Netflix announced the live action series based on the classic manga. So uh, I watched this cartoon series in the Philippines. It was dubbed in Tagalog. And my classmates and I would watch it. And everyone loved it. So it'll be interesting to see them adapt it as live action. So Annex on Netflix, the Twitter account, an official Netflix Twitter account, um, they posted it and it said basically the, uh, a brief description of the story. It says, when Yusuke dies saving another's life, he'll embark on a journey across the world of, world of humans, spirits and demons to return to the land of the living. So Yoshihiro Togashi's legendary manga, Yu Yu Hakusho, will be a live action series on Netflix. So they are closely working um, with uh, Akira Mori producing for Robot Communication. So it's a Japanese company. If I'm not mistaken, they're, I think they own the um, Netflix content's acquisition director. Kazu Kazutaka Sakamoto will executive produce the project with Akira Mori. So it looks like they're going to be producing it and hopefully they'll be um, taking their time. I'm, uh, I'm a little worried. I was uh, going to say, I'm interested on your opinion because you're the anime uh, guru. This is probably one of the best, if not the best uh, anime like when it comes to to when when you talk to anime fans and when it comes to action like shonen animes, Yu Yu Hakusho is always in their top five, right? Uh, you know, Full Metal Al Alchemist Brotherhood, um, uh, you know, uh, Hunter Hunter, all, all these th all these things, um, all of the beloved animes that that you've seen, uh, Yu Yu Hakusho did it before. Mm -hmm. The like you know, any sort of tournament, any sort of tournament animes that you've seen in the in in the recently things, they got it from um, 
they got it from Yu Yu Hakusho because the Dark Tournament is one of the best um, stories, uh, story arcs ever created for them. Um, I'm worried because they didn't do a good job with Death Note. Netflix. I'm talking about Netflix. Uh, um, Death Note was a great anime. They it didn't translate very well. Um, they tried Full Metal Alchemist, the 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 kid version, not not the Brotherhood one. It, it was okay. I, I I didn't mind it when I saw it. It was fine. Um, Bleach well, it wasn't too bad at all. <laughs> so when they did, when they did Bleach, it wasn't too bad. I'm a little worried and I'm a little scared because I love 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 this anime. This is this is an anime that if I'm bored with other animes, if it's too many fillers or anything like that, I go back to this f- fucking anime and I watch it again and and my love for anime uh grows again because of because of this uh because of this anime. You know? Um Yusuke Yurameshi, he's a, he's one of those delinquent kids in in Japan that like you know that that always gets into fights, all all of these things, but he has that this heart of gold. So the reason the reason he he became a ghost detective in in, in this story was because you know he was you know he was he was cutting class, he was being a badass, he was whatever whatever, mm-hmm. but he saved the kid, he saved the kid's life because. No, no, no. You know, he the the kid was gonna get run over by a car, so he pushed the kid away, and he died in the process. So that's basically what uh what it entailed. So the the friends that he has in in Mike's background right there, um, Kuwabara, the guy with the sword, that's his best friend. Kurama, the guy in the with the red head, he's uh he's a demon. So it's uh, Hie, uh the little short guy. Hie is basically what Vegeta is to Goku. Like an adversary, a lancer, uh, somebody who who always wants to be the best at anything, but it's always the lead guy that's always the best, right? So use case Goku, whatever, whatever. Again, the Dark Tournament uh, story arc, I would put, I would put it up against any anime uh, that ever created, and I would, I would let you know, and I would. You know, see, I will tell you guys. You guys are will be more entertained with that than um, than what uh, than those uh, the other animes and stuff. So, Let's I'm, I'm yes, sir. If you will, can you tell us where we can find this? Um, Yu Yu Hakusho is in Crunchyroll. It's in Hulu. Um, I I don't think it's in Netflix anymore because they took it out, but. It could be Netflix, but but uh, Hulu, I'm guaranteed it's there because uh, that's where I watch it. Um, it's a little annoying in the Japanese version, just because uh, Yurameshi's uh, Yusuke Yurameshi's voice is a little too high pitched for me. The English version is amazing, so if, if you want to just listen to it dubbed, it's fine. You will uh, you will actually love it. So. Mike Mike said that it got translated to Tagalog in, in the Philippines and everybody loves it as ghost fighters, you know. They have different names, didn't they? Like they they like they had Dennis and and Steve or <laughs> something. Yeah. yeah, that's why like <laughs> I'm I'm I was really surprised because they made Funko Pops of them. Oh yeah. I got, I got most of them. And yeah. their names are different. It's not the English names, like yeah, yeah. Like, it's, it's the, the, it's the, the, the <laughs> Yeah. But uh, again, like Everybody, you know, everybody has their favorite characters in there. My favorite character is a side character, and and you you'll understand why, uh, Pinhead. If you ever get a chance to see it, like you'll know who that that my favorite character is. Okay. Just just by looking at that that character, you're yeah. gonna be like, yeah, that's this is Kuya's favorite character, definitely, hundred percent. And then <laughs> if, if you end, if you end up watching it, let me know like uh, in the in a private message, who who you think it was, and then. And I'll let you know, because right. because it's it's absolutely it, again I, I can't say anything uh, bad about it. Um, another anime that he, that uh, Togashi created was Hunter Hunter, which is his like um kind of like his return to greatness because uh he he stopped doing the he stopped doing uh 
Yu Yu Hakusho uh, after a, a couple of uh, a couple of seasons and stuff. So he did Hunter Hunter, and that that's another another amazing anime that he did. So it's a completely different, completely different um, story arc or way way of things, but same same uh, fa- uh, same thread. So you'll you'll understand if, if you're if you're a fan of Togashi, you you will you will definitely love Hunter Hunter. So cool. that's it. That's my that piece sucks. on it. Cool. All right. Yeah. Hopefully we will get more updates as they, uh, when they announce a cast and when they start production and all that stuff. Hopefully they do, they do well. Moving on. Yeah, we shall see. Uh, so this one's from uprocks.com. So, uh, Johnny Knoxville and Steve-O, they're, uh, filming Jackass 4. And, uh, in day two of, uh, production, they've already been hospitalized. (laughs) <laughs> uh, of course they have. So I remember um when Jackass dropped, my brother and I loved watching mm-hmm. it. And the first movie specifically, I remember the first movie, and that was just the funniest shit I've ever seen. Like and it was it, some of it was downright stupid, but I mean yeah. it's not me getting hurt, it's some other jackals. <laughs> like jackass. So it was and I even remember like my dad, like we were watching it with my dad, and my dad was just like laughing. And it was like some great memories just to like see and hear my dad laugh. So, you know, um, so yeah, it says here, it's been 10 years since Jackass 3D. I don't, I haven't even seen that one. Um, it's funny. You the like Daredevil it. stunt like team's that. third cinematic masterpiece. And at the time, the gang was already getting up in years. In fact, the threequel was something like a farewell to them, utterly destroying their bodies in inventively foolhardy ways. Yet here they are, two days into filming their long threat threatened Jackass 4. According to Cinema Blend, Johnny Knoxville, age 49, and Steve O, age 46, have already Jeez. been hospitalized. The news oh, was broken by Bam Margera, who's only 41, on his website only. Uh, in a video recorded <laughs> in the hospital waiting room, Margera said Knoxville and Steve O got hurt by jumping on a full-speed treadmill with band equipment. And by band equipment, he meant, a quote, a fucking tuba, unquote. <laughs> but the injuries didn't seem to get Margera down. He flashed a devil sign gesture and said, rock and roll, then showed off some scars he'd received in what is presumably another non-tuba-related stunt. So... This is far from the first time any of the Jackass team whose original show debuted on MTV 20 years ago this past October have really Ooh. hurt themselves. It would almost be a letdown if someone didn't get hospitalized. Of course, really? inj- injuring yourself in a tuba treadmill incident is a bit different when you're in your 20s than it is when you're <laughs> pushing half a century as not <laughs> movies. Still, Tom Cruise almost kills himself to entertain us, and he's nearing 60. Maybe they should team up. Although surely even Johnny Knoxville knows enough not to put his life in the hands of Elon Musk. Because apparently Tom Cruise is going to team up with Elon Musk to film a movie in space. So there you go. Not only uh, that, Tom Cruise would get sick of their shit real quick. You'd see him <laughs> explode way more than what you saw him do on that set now. Dude, I sleep with every night. The future of this fucking industry. Who brought these pieces Plus. of garbage on my set? Not yeah, shot. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, I, I I I was gonna say that they were they're, they're getting too old for this shit, but then I you know I remember them. I'm like, you know what? They don't care. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, I, exactly. I, 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 I'm I, I'm definitely like weirded out because of the fact that um, uh, both of them went to rehab for. <laughs> yeah, and, and they're I, I think they're sober, right? Aren't aren't they sober? Yeah, now? they are both sober. So. Yeah. Most of the time, like when they're doing these stunts, they're either fucking high, uh, drug, drugged up high, or or drunk as hell. So, so they might be relapsing soon because uh, I don't know, man. Uh, I don't know. I I liken it to, and you know, Kuyo get this reference, and I don't like to keep going back to the ref- wrestling references, but these guys are like Mick Foley and, and Terry Funk. They just won't die. Like yep. they they beat they they take the they take the beatings. 
And if you don't for, know who for that the love is, of it, for the love of it, exactly. If you don't know who that is, listeners, look it up. Cactus Jack, Mick Foley, Terry Funk, these guys put their bodies on the line <laughs> and just did stupid shit just for the sheer love of it, as Kuya said. So these and, and they and if you recall, Kuya, you know just as well as I did, do just like the Jackass crew, Terry Funk, especially. And Mick Foley both went into their late, late years of destroying their bodies, like into their fifties. ECW, man, fuck, that, that, so, that, was the, that was the crazy times. So yeah, so these guys doing it at forty-eight for guys mm-hmm. like me and Kuya, it doesn't see, seem that extreme because we've seen other guys do it well into their fifties and. I know, Some but they're, but they're sober. Team. That's the, that's my issue. I'm like, fucking, how how are you guys gonna be doing this without? Oh man, they Without love their anything. craft, dude. They they love it. I listen to uh, Steve O talk, you know, on his podcast and a couple other shows I've listened to him on, and he just loves it. He loves to just do stuff that nobody else is gonna do. That fucking snapping turtle on his nipples was like the yeah. worst thing I've ever. Uh, and that's what, and that's what I was gonna say. Right? I mean, you remember that, that one, right? I like, remember that, was, that yeah, one. And, and that's what I was gonna say. These guys, even beyond the drug. They have an extremely high threshold for pain, and, and they do so, it, and they, yeah. they just do it like Johnny Knoxville, like blindfolded, getting attacked by a bull. Yeah, that, for me, that <laughs> was that, that was the worst the, thing. The, the naked paintball. Yeah, you the know? naked paintball. Like, God. Or the bungee wedgie, dude. That one, like the hurt bungee me. wedgie. Oh my god! There was blood left over, dude. But, on the this fire hose, blood. the fire hose incident, like, like we. It, all four of us should watch like Jack, like a, a couple of Jackass movies together. Just, just, just yeah. like and do do like a live reaction Especially or whatever. For oh man, for the fans, just because it's funny. That'd be funny. Like, like the the fact we- that that Bam Margera, this badass, like you know, skateboarder, rebel, whatever, like you know, double horn, whatever, scared of fucking snakes. Any oh, little thing that was sad. You, you throw you throw you throw a goddamn hose at him and he, he freaks out like a baby. Like a girl. Well, that was sad. He's like, <laughs> are you crying? Like, are you crying? Yeah. So <laughs> like, it like, was kind of sad, but yeah, it, it's great. Like, like, like I said, I'm not shocked, even though that they're that old, because like I said, they have a high threshold for pain. I, I hope they're, they're, you know, I hope they do well. I'm looking forward to Jackass Four. Then, like, I mean, yeah, fucking... me too, man. I, I love them. I love them all. I love uh, Party Boy. So, uh, oh man, up, man, fucking Party Boy. Oh my God. Wee man, I love Wee Man. Oh, oh yeah. Wee Man. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, I love the. I like the the slapstick kind of like the my one of my favorite all time bits was when uh, he's like, "Hey, bam, high five. and then this oh, the, the little, the little hand <laughs> just wax him like I mean, completely clothesline, bam, you know. I'm like, this is I love this stuff. Wait, what, wasn't he holding? Oh wait, was it some other guy was holding soup, right? Oh, he was holding like food for everybody. Like yeah, Sam yeah. got food for everybody, and it exploded when it, the gigantic hand hit him in the face. <laughs> Wasn't there one time when they were in the sporting goods store and he like got his ass kicked by Butterbean? Yeah, um, yeah, that was Johnny Knoxville. Knoxville. Yeah. Knoxville got his ass knocked. He got <laughs> like, clocked, dude. Two- <laughs> yeah. It was awesome. Like was they're, yeah. was it they're stupid, that, um, but they're legends. The, the, the worst, the worst one was um, God, I forgot. I forgot the guy's name. But uh, he pressed the the doorbell and the fucking uh, airbag blew up and hit him in the <laughs> face. <laughs> and he had a concussion because everybody was laughing, oh right? God. It's like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> and he had like a broken orbital bone. Oh, that's like, right. I, I forgot his name because like he he's Wasn't the one that always. He, he, no, 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 not it was not it's not done. It, it was um, he he always gets the the crap uh, the crap rolls uh, besides uh, Aaron. Besides, oh. Isn't it the same guy who ate the vomit omelet? Or- oh, foul, dude! I hated that hmm. part. No, the the one that that the uh, the craps on command. What's his name? Yeah, I don't remember his name. I know who you're talking about. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's either Aaron. Yeah, it's either Aaron that gets the worst of it, of it, or or that guy. Mike, so, what were you gonna say about Bam? Yeah, was it Bam Margera that would always attack his dad? Like I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's he always beat him up on the and toilet. His, and his uncle Vito. <laughs> Yeah, oh man, I just I love the I love it. I love the, yeah. jokes. The fact that we're recalling a lot of stuff from like 20 years ago 
is a testament to what they did. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, come on, man. Only those They're guys legends. dress up their dick like a mouse and then stick it in a, a snake cage <laughs> with with a with a live play, snake and play oh puppeteer with a live snake so it bites it. <laughs> like, come on, man. <laughs> that, that's Pontius. That's that's Chris Pontius. Chris Pontius. Um, yeah. Yeah. He always he always wants to put his his dick somewhere. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. When you run out of stuff to do, you gotta put your dick in stuff. Yeah, okay. but again, I God bless him. I hope I hope everything goes well. <laughs> Good luck. Good yeah, luck. Yeah. All righty. Funny Moving stuff. Moving on, uh, the National Film Registry has Ooh. added. Uh, yeah. Uh, National Film Registry. It added a bunch of films to their um, to their registry. So I'm just loading the page here. This is from Deadline.com. I don't know why it's not loading right now. Because we're in the middle of a show, and that would be unprofessional. <laughs> well, I'm loading every page as I... No, it's not your fault. I'm just saying that's why it's oh, so yeah, yeah. to load. <laughs> All right, so I've got it here on my phone. So this is from Deadline.com. National Film Registry adds The Dark Knight, Grease, Shrek, Blues Brothers, Hurt Locker, Sweet, Sweetback, and more. So the Library of Congress has unveiled its annual list of 25 movies to make the cut for the National Film Registry. The selection this year, considered among Mer America's most influential motion pictures, includes titles such as uh, Christopher Nolan's 2008 The Dark Knight. So there you go. Christopher Nolan was probably like, win, a win. <laughs> like after his, <laughs> after his, after his movie, big ass L last week. Movies should be shown in, in, in uh, movie theaters experience there first and not on small screens so yeah there's the dark knight and then you've got shrek and then grease uh the blues brothers hurt locker and then hurt locker um the joy luck club yeah, okay. yeah. amazing film yeah, yeah, yeah. willies of the field for which Sidney poitier became the first african-american to win the oscar for best actor Mark yeah, Melvin one, yeah. Van Peebles, 1971, Sweet Sweetbacks, Badass Song. Um, there's a bunch of others. So, yeah, of course, the most notable ones, uh, why I added this is, is, of course, The Dark Knight and Shrek. Um, uh, you know. Don't care. It's, it's worthy, man. And it don't care. Yeah. So, uh, Pinhead did, needs to check it out. Yeah, so, do. Yeah. Watch it, dude. Oh wait! Speaking of films, did you check out uh, The Incredibles? Nope. Oh, okay. <laughs> I fell asleep. Oh man. <laughs> so All right. yeah. no worries. Gonna have to uh, add that for our upcoming series that I that I yeah. talked to you guys about. Oh yeah! Don't spoil the name yet until we no, do not it. Yet. Not yet. Uh, we yeah. Reveal it when it's ready. Okay. Uh, Mike needs to see Godfather too, so that should be on the list. Oh, oh yeah, be. that's on the list. But yeah, I do want to talk about the Dark Knight because, you know, um, it. I think it still is one of the most quintessential superhero movies. Because stop, yeah, Dark stop, was stop. stop, stop. One of the most quintessential movies it doesn't have to be superhero. It was a great movie, regardless yeah. of like. Uh, that's, yeah. true. That's, that's true. That's true. That's true. Exactly. Regardless of regardless of like whether it be a superhero movie or not, so right, like it's, it was a great movie. It's I think it's genius from start to finish. Everything is carefully. It's it's well crafted. Every line, every everything that happens works in the story, and there's never a question of why is this there? Oh, because it's going to work in this next scene, or it's going to come up like you know a, a little bit later. But it's going. It's everything connects, like right blows me away that the only the only critique that i had is fucking uh christian B B bale's uh, batman voice i, I love it. It. I, I fucking what is it i'm <laughs> 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 Him I'm, I'm eating my bulls right now Where is he? yeah it was too forced yeah. where is the soup <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one. Like, mm, and I don't that, like it. That, that but but everything else, him. everything else was spot on. So. Right, but I think that's also because if he spoke in his normal Bruce Wayne voice, someone would have been like Bruce. But Wayne. hey, but you know, in, in Zack Snyder's universe, 
there, there's a invention called the voice scrambler. Yeah, in the Telltale game, there's a voice scrambler too. But right, I'm just saying, in Christopher what, Knowles' I, world, they could have they could have had a voice scrambler somewhere. They could have, but Chris just wanted him to be. He wanted him to just oof, like put that. Right. It went with the force that he he was as Batman. That's that's how I it felt. Did. About there you it. go. It did. You're, you're right. Yeah. Christian Bale is an actor, so he's got to act. Exactly. He's gonna let he's him an act. actor, or he's gonna be like, "Are you fucking blind, mate?" <laughs> <laughs> Stop <laughs> walking on you're the set. You're in my shot. You're in my shot. In here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't walk back and forth when you're setting up your lights. <laughs> did, did did you guys when when you guys first saw um, the Joker? Did you did you see uh, what's his name in makeup or did you see the Joker? I fucking saw the Joker. I saw the Joker, man. I saw the fucking Joker. I didn't even like. I was like, oh shit. Who? who wait. First of all, who's what's his name? Um, Heath Ledger. Heath, Heath Ledger. Ledger. Sorry. I, I, no, yeah. I saw I saw the Joker, and I before that when they did the like when they did that promo teaser trailer where they were doing the. Uh, starting Light. tonight. I'm a man. I, I, people will buy. I'm a man of my word. And you didn't see anything. I was like, oh shit. That's yep. the Joker. Like, so, and by the time they revealed it, I was like, yeah. That, so there was no. Heath just portrayed the Joker beyond yep. anything. He was yep. amazing in that one. And I know one person who was in my group who just absolutely and he knows who he is he listens to the podcast he, desp- <laughs> he despises Heath Ledger almost to the point where he almost got glee when he died I'm like you, you're taking it a little too <laughs> far and there's a lot of people that did that and it's unnecessary because he did something with the Joker that no one ever has done and no one ever will do and that's what makes this film so classic. On top of the immaculate directing by Christopher Nolan, and there's other. I can't stand Nolan. He's overrated. His no, best no. movie was Dark Knight, and that movie sucked. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> there's a lot of people that have that mentality, and it's it's just like it's a shame because if you just sat down and took away your personal bias and your hatred you'd actually be able to see how great the film is. It's like the Man of Steel. Like, if you, if you took away your hatred for Zack Snyder, you would, Zack Snyder, you'd understand how much of a masterpiece these films are That's instead right. of trash. Mike, you agree, right, Mike? Oh, yeah. I see. I didn't even have to mention it anymore. Pinhead does it for me. <laughs> well, it's garbage. I'm tired of it. Like, it, it's, it's ridiculous. I don't like it. Because it wasn't my head cannon, so oh, it wasn't That's my not head Christopher Reeves, Superman. Superman. <laughs> but, yeah, That's not Christopher Reeves. Tell. Okay, well, go through the annals of history and come back to me and repeat that. <laughs> so the National Registry is it? Is it just like you know? Do, do they just let uh, all the eventually all the fucking movies in, or no, do they yeah, select the first? No, it's a selective process. Like they only so it's like twenty five films a year. So, so, so it's like the criteria. Captain Marvel, uh, Captain Marvel shouldn't be in that fucking registry at all. Right? It's, not even, it's not even gonna be close, dude. I don't okay, know. I, I just wanted to make sure because Captain Karen will not make it to the national registry. All right. So it's it's so so it's like the Criterion Collection of. Right. Mm, okay. Okay. I got you. Okay. I got you. Because right. like yeah. you really have to be picked to be in there. So right. I do want to mention also, um, Heath Ledger won the. Uh, Oscar that year. That's right. That's right. Oh, second person to do it. Yeah, yep, never. that's right. right. Second to my boy from Network. Yep. So, all right. Moving on, we've got Chris Pine is going to star in a Dungeons and Dragons film. Oh, no, oh. not again with the Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> yeah, well, right now we're getting, there's a, there's in a way a renaissance of Dungeons and Dragons. Um, players and the game itself um i know they they wrote a book um with recipes like basically a dungeons and dragons cookbook and one of the writers of that is uh kyle newman who also directed um fanboys which is a great film a uh, great star- uh, love letter to star wars fans and star wars in general so if you haven't checked that out check out fanboys but yeah he's one of the writers of that 
and then there's okay, okay, yeah. a I little mean, more promise. Movie? Have you guys checked it out? Oh, I've seen it. I I loved it. I've seen yeah. the movie. Yeah, the movie, right? The that, movie? That's the one where they, they had an argument with the Star Trek fans, right? Yeah. Is that yeah. The yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I What's did see thing? that. What's his name was not as big back then. Um, I'm trying to remember. Was it Wesley? Wesley? Not Wesley. No. Um, oh, my goodness. His, <laughs> he, he laughs like Rogan. Oh, Seth Rogan. Rogan. Seth Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that Veronica Mars in it, too? Yes. Yes. And I forgot her name. I just now is it just me with the Dungeons and Dungeons and Dragons? Is that like after uh, Stranger Things came out? Did it resonate with like the younger generation again? Did that like it was that what really brought it home for the the kids in in school? I don't know. I don't know if that's the case or if it's that. I would say that's a factor, and you you would be correct on that gesture. But there's also I don't know how, but there's like a hidden generation that actually has been playing it. Like we, we have someone at work that's relatively young and he knows everything about Dungeons and Dragons. Right. So he could put some of the old farts who may have seen its inception to shame. So it, it's just, it just depends. It just depends. Right. Yeah, um, they also released um, Art and Arcana. It's a visual history. So that this was the book that came out, I think, a year or two ago um, for Dungeons and & Dragons, and that was also co-written by Kyle Newman, Sam Witwer, who a lot of you may know or may be familiar with as Vader's Secret Apprentice. He's huge on Dungeons & Dragons as well. Uh, the Big Show. He was, and had, he was in show. a... Huh? The, the Big Show is a very... Very devout. Really, TNT I did wrestling. not know that. Yeah. J- uh, Jason, Jason Momoa. Right. Jason Momoa is uh, also. Oh, really? Uh, just, yeah. Joe Manganiello. Is Joe Manganiello. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah he, like all, all of these beefy wow. motherfucker. Yeah. Vin Diesel <laughs> too. You could add Vin Diesel in there as well. Really? But, awesome. but you know, like when, growing up, right? Like my 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 attest to this. I I grew up in the Philippines and I went to school in the Catholic uh, Catholic school. We played Dungeons and Dragons there, and I almost got expelled. That's the devil. Because we we weren't supposed <laughs> to be playing. You know, we weren't supposed to be playing role playing oh, games at all. Right. You were during that satanic panic shit. Yeah, it's that was the like, devil. It, it was it was crazy. But there there was one book that I really want to buy because of the fact that I fell in, fell in love with it because it it tells the entire mythos of all uh, of all. The, the deities, the, the the deities and demigods and, and gods and goddesses of all mythology, and it, it's called uh, deities uh, and demigods. I think that's the name of the, the the book. It shows like um, like for example, Odin, the the, the All Father. This is his hit points. This is his. <laughs> this is his. Uh, you know, like all of these things, and like it it breaks down on 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 if if you're this type of uh, class. You should you should you should do this because it'll gain you X amount of you know whatever whatever whatever. So I was just like I was so fascinated I, just because of mythology. I was a mythology nut back in the day. So like I wanted to find that book, and then when I saw that book again, you know how much it costs now in, in Amazon? Mm, Six hundred bucks. A shitload of money. <laughs> so I, I'm so mad. I was just like, damn it! Like Amazon could have you know given it to me for like thirty bucks or something. Can, That'd can be I just cool. say too, like I never understood the like that it's of the devil kind of talk. With with Dungeons and Dragons, like my my parents growing up, like oh that's that's Satan worshiping crap. And blah, blah blah blah. Hey, would you like to watch Lord of the Rings? It's really really good. Yeah, and I'm just like um. How is I, I, I remembered. I remembered. Well, see, go ahead, go ahead, Pinhead. Well, it's, I, I so I had similar experience, Jester, because I watched Hellraiser when I was six, mm-hmm. and when Species came out. I wanted to see it. My mom's like, no, you're not going to watch that. I'm like, I've already yeah. seen Hellraiser at six. What does it matter? It doesn't matter. She gets naked. I'm like, what? <laughs> who cares? So it, 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 the parents are just goofy. Yeah. They're just goofy. They all have their, it, I guess they all have their lines, you know, like it you doesn't matter if you come from the Philippines, yeah. from the States, China, Japan, no matter where you go, 
how brilliant they are. Parents are just goofy. It's just strange because I, I remember growing up too. It was like I could see the most violent, violent, and I mean violent, like yeah, you know, like, like, like death Pinhead's wish, wa- right? Like death Pinhead's wish, watching like Hellraiser, and people's skulls are getting ripped off. But then as soon as titties get on the screen, the parents are like diving across the room, like oh, <laughs> oh close your eyes, not not human yeah. anatomy, because they yeah. 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 close your eyes, boy. Yeah. <laughs> no, but- yeah, like my- I like I like I like to I'd like to say one thing on this subject. This is what makes my grandmother one of the most badass women in the world. Because when I was a kid, we were watching Serial Mom, and there was a scene where oh. the guy was watching porno, and there was tits just flopping all over the place. And my <laughs> uncle was watching me watch, and he's like, he looked at my grandmother, and he said why are you letting him watch this? Do you think he should be watching this? And my grandmother looked at him knowing that I already seen Hellraiser and all that. And she said, he's seen much worse than this. So just be quiet and let him do what he's doing. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I, I, I remember like, uh, remember um, Kevin Smith's uh, movie Dogma guys. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, uh, Like Mike, you, you remember this fucking story because this, this, this is because uh, of somebody that you personally know. Uh huh. They uh they wanted us to boycott it. Oh yeah. Like all of us, like we wanted they, they wanted us to have picket signs, boycotting it because of our Catholic faith, uh you know it 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 you know it, you know it vilifies the, whatever whatever all that stuff right. Mm-hmm. So I I asked uh, that person a question. <laughs> so you don't like this movie, but you let your grandkids watch Harry Potter. Exactly. Oh no, yeah. no! Harry Potter's a devil too. Like, oh no, <laughs> she she did, Mike. Mm. She 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 let them. Oh boy, interesting. Yeah, because I I caught them because I, I I was I was like I was like, what are you guys you know what are you guys watching? Because I saw them like you know whatever I saw them in the movie theater, and and, and I I asked the kids, so what did you guys watch? Oh, Harry Potter. Mm. 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 Hypocrites. There's that liars standard. Yeah, team. but it's okay. But 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 you know you know who that person is. And we, oh yeah. You know, yeah. we we, yeah. we have nothing but love. But oh yeah. <laughs> so um, I do want to mention part of the Stranger Things. Yeah, I think that that brought it back also to make mainstream when they especially yeah. the first season that they start the show. They start that first episode with that like the kids are playing, you know, Dungeons and Dragons. So. They did release a collector set of Stranger Things, Dungeons and Dragons style, with a Demogorgon uh, playing piece, and then like, like a starter set basically. And then uh, they also just did on the Stranger Things YouTube. If I'm not mistaken, they did a collaboration. You have some of the cast members playing a Dungeons and Dragons game, and the the whole thing is like a two hour like video. I haven't even checked it out yet, but I do want to check it out. But I've always been uh, and- interested in playing it. And, ahead, and I'll say, going off, it, it, I want to learn how to play Dungeons and Dragons. I'm just, yeah. I wish someone would teach me because it it, it looks fascinating. Practice your. Uh... You really, you really have to, from especially talking to the person we work with. Every time I'm waiting for my Uber, you really have to get in depth with storytelling structure. Character development. You really have to, really have to have a vivid imagination. If you want to be a dungeon it. master, you should be. You should have to be awesome. You have to be awesome. At but that. that's what I'm saying. Like to get to these heights, dungeon master. All you really have to have a vivid and just immaculate imagination mm-hmm. that goes be. It it gets it. It reminds me of Dune. Like you have to transcend. Just, I really want to learn it. If I, yep. if I, if someone would teach me, I would love to learn this. Pinhead, uh, get your dice game uh, strong. That's my recommendation. I know that's what I've been told. So get your dice game strong. That's the reason why, like, when I play craps, I'm kind of, I kind of win, mo- win money. Well, <laughs> hey, buddy, you ex, and I both ex, because ex, I got, ex I got the Dragons Master. Well. <laughs> I don't know. No, I don't know nothing about Dungeons and Dragons, but uh, buddy, 
When I was in high school, seven I and eleven, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. I, I got a lot. Of, I got a lot of money off of people from crap. So you know, I have there that golden go. wrist. I have that golden wrist. There you go. There you go. That that's the thing. And also, cha- uh, chaotic neutral is the best. So yeah. So here in the Hollywood Reporter, um, Chris Pine is still in talks to star in the movie. Um, they've been trying to make this for like ever. You know, um, he's going to be Paladin, right? Who knows? There's no fucking. There's no director on board or anything. Um, Jonathan Goldstein and John Francis Daly, they uh, okay. directed um, New Line Sleeper Hit Game Night, which is actually a pretty okay. entertaining film. Yeah, that's um, interesting. Wait, so it's gonna be? A, is this gonna be like a comedy thing? Uh, no, Probably. I don't think so. Um, no, I mean like, like a comedy slash you know action adventure type of thing. like you know like. They they start off in uh, in real world and then they go to pretend land or something like that. Uh, I don't know. I hope not. I don't know. We shall see. Um, it says here the game whose rights are controlled by Hasbro was previously adapted by New Line in two thousand. That film starred Jeremy Irons. In recent years, the property yeah. has been at the center of a legal battle over its film rights, with a two thousand fifteen settlement appearing to have paved the way for Warner Brothers. To make a movie that at one time had Ansel Elgort in early talks of star. However, the rights eventually hit the trail for Paramount, which is a production and distribution deal with Hasbro. So, yeah, they're still working on it. So we shall find as out. As long as you guys keep Uwe Boyle as far away from it as possible, I'm good. <laughs> keep that creep piece of garbage far away from it. Yep. Alrighty, are you guys ready to jump in the Spider Verse? Oh God! <laughs> Again, what are we got now? More Spider Man. Hey guys, oh. did, did I tell you guys that I got I got a part in Spider uh, Spider Man Three? Oh, oh, I forgot I forgot to mention me too. I got one. Right, too. The, the Pinhead, you got one too, right? You got that part. I did. Okay, yeah. Mike, Mike, I know you have a part because you're filmmaker, oh. Mike. Yeah, <laughs> I was interested. I was interested that I got. I thought I would have got the part that Jester got over. I thought it would have been reversed, but you know. no, it, it's the eyes. You know, it's the, it's yeah, the yeah, eyes. I know. Those. That's why I said those sexy eyes. I'm know? in the mask, you know. Like you got to see my sexy eyes. So I know. That's why I got the role. I like to give him a lick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the first one here is Marvel and Sony extend their Spidey deal. So Star.com. Uh. So uh, let's see. A new report suggests the deal between Marvel Studios and Sony Pictures to bring Spider-Man to the MCU has been extended. This is posted three days ago. Um, the initial deal between Marvel and Sony fell apart in August 2019 after Disney reportedly asked for all future Spider-Man projects to be a 50-50 co-financing arrangement between the two studios. Then a new deal was then reached in September in which Marvel and Sony would co-produce the yet-to-be-titled Spider-Man 3 while leaving the door open for Tom Holland's Peter Parker to appear in one other future MCU film. So, that a, uh, what was that? No, I'm just, I'm just kind of been, you know. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, with Spider-Man 3 now becoming like Spider-Verse, essentially, um, some people, I was reading, like, someone say, oh, so Spider-Man 3 will be the Spider-Verse, and then after Spider-Man 3, um, they can now focus again on Peter Parker's story. I'm like, really? Why are we doing this? You know? I just thought it was funny because I saw a meme of all the actors that got cast in this movie, and they're all in this, like, in this massive party room. They're all high-fiving each other, like, yeah, yeah, you know? And then you just see Tom Holland in the corner, like, Guys, you know, this is my movie, right? (laughs) (laughs) If we're going to do this, I would please hope that you're going to... If we're going to do this, then we have to have Madam Web in there, too. She has to be there. Maybe, maybe not. We're going down that route. We got Doc Strange there, so... Oh, the mentor? Yeah. Yeah. Jesus fucking Christ. I mean, the kid should see. Let the kid grow up already, man. Fuck. (laughs) God damn it, man. And then, of course, there's reports that Willem Dafoe and Thomas Hayden Church are going to return 
Yeah. Rumor Good. here. Rumor. Nah. Remember we talked about it like last week. We were talking about that. Shit. Yeah, I got. Super, I want him. I want him in it. Like he has to be in it. They have to be in. William yeah. Defoe has to be in it, just for the simple fact that the last conversation me and Mike had in person was talking about William Defoe mm-hmm. being in there, and like we have to see just so we can hear. What I've done for this company, like we we like yeah. we need I that, we need that out. <laughs> what I sacrifice, like seriously, like we so, need. So who are the, who are the, Spider-Man? So who are the villains now? We we got Goblin. Everybody got, in uh, the sun. We got Sandman. Electro. Doc Ock. Electro. Uh, who else? Carnage. Oh, yeah. Doc Ock, right? Is somebody gonna play Carnage or? Well, so. that's that's um, Woody Harrelson in the Venom yep. sequel. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about way off casting. You're like, I was like, Woody yeah. Harrelson. Okay. No, no, I, I'm I'm because ta- what I'm what I'm thinking about like right now in in regards to their plot, it's going to be the sin- Sinister Six, yeah. Possibly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I would understand that because Sony has been banging on that gong for years yeah. now that they want the Sinister Six out there. So I they, can see it. Yeah, they tried to do it with the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies. It would have yeah. worked. It would have yeah. worked. Yeah, it would have worked. But couldn't get it up in time. That's OK, though. I mean, and, and fucking uh, Michael, Keaton, Michael, Michael Keaton was amazing as the Vulture, so. Yeah, uh, he was man. I, gosh, yeah, he was. A great he was vulture. like Michael Keaton was awesome as the vulture. I was like, okay. so good. He, and, he, and then including Mysterio, <laughs> right? So that's six, but, yeah. if I'm mistaken. But technically, Mysterio's dead. Or, eh, fuck yeah. out of here, dude. Or he's is not, he? He's not. So dead. we got. So we got Rhino. Yeah, or Rhino. <laughs> or Craven the Hunter, if that's the case. Yes. So. Hmm. Yep. I don't know, but yeah, this is it? this is getting this is getting to where uh, it's going to be like Ocean's Eleven, right? This is what this is what's going to be. I don't know. It might not be executed as well as Ocean's Eleven, so that's what scares me. Uh, well, we'll see. I mean, you know, ensemble. According to to certain memes, uh, ensemble movies are the best thing that the MCU can do. Oh God, here we go. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Okay. Right. All righty. I don't know. Oh. Moving on, this is from Yahoo.com. Avengers Endgame star reacts to getting recast by Marvel. So this is Emma Furman. She played Cassie Lang in Avengers Endgame. Mm-hmm. Um, she found the daughter out, of Ant Man, right? Yep, uh, the okay. daughter of Ant Man, Paul Rudd's Ant Man, Scott Lang. She found out that she no longer had the job, the same way every other Marvel fan did. With that Disney Investor Day, wow! And her previous boss, Kevin Feige, announced that Catherine Newton will be played by uh, will be Catherine Newton will be playing Cassie Lang in the brand new Ant Man three. That's uh, up, man. Yeah, so she got the dirty right there. Pretty she sure. got that Terrence Howard treatment. <laughs> yeah, but in this yeah. case, not even asking for more money. She just wants to. Like, yeah, that that's why when you that's what makes me just that's dirty. Like you just man, bam for no apparent reason whatsoever. Like you, that's a, oh. at least let them know oh. before you announce it to the whole wide world. Exactly. Like have some mm-hmm. decorum and decency. Exactly. Yeah. Like come on, I I get it. I get it. You're Hollywood. You're above reproach in your ideals. We get it. Have s- just surprise us once in a while, please, and and be humans. I know that's hard for you, plastic fucks, but please try it once in a while. This is this is disgusting. Yeah, she tweeted. Up. Just wanted to come on here and say that I see all your kind messages, heart emoji. Thank you all for your support. It has meant the world to me. I was as sad as you all were to hear the news Thursday. I can only hope that this means there is something else for me in the future of the MCU. No, fuck it. Like, like she Probably can move on to, She can move into to DC. She can be Donna Troy for, for all I care. Uh, I don't yeah, but Donna Troy right now, oh, and, and Titans is played very well. 
by um oh my god or or somebody you know it, maybe in the new nightwing movie i don't know <laughs> yeah why not yeah, there you go why not kind of cool so yeah he can yeah. be in my new horror movie so. there you go right you call go. me up there you go no joke so moving on hbo max as of this recording is now on roku for all the this was the last deal that they had to make uh for you know for a lot of people to be happy on the hbo max group that i'm a part of on facebook you there wouldn't be a there wouldn't be a day that would go by where someone wouldn't post and ask when is roku when is hbo max coming to roku well now it's on roku so there you go have at it so they finally is it good <laughs> enough now is it good out. enough now for you I know, right? So yeah, this is from gizmodo.com. And this was just on, they announced mm-hmm. it on Wednesday and it was official on Thursday when uh, HBO Max went live on Roku. So of course, they're doing this in time for the release of Wonder Woman 1984 exactly. uh, on Christmas Day. So that's mm-hmm. the final piece that they needed. Um, a lot of people use Roku and have Roku even built in on their TVs. So now it's available. So now there's no excuse for people not to be able to access HBO Max. Um, and then they also announced Mortal Kombat will be, Hell yeah. will be in theaters and HBO Max April 16, 2021. Hell yeah. So, yeah. Um, a lot I'm of excited people, about that. Yeah. Uh, I know Kuya hates it, but I'm excited about this. I can't wait for it because as, as long wanted... as they played the, the same techno fucking song that they they played in yeah, the, back in the day, that's all that matters. Yeah, I, I agree. You know, I want to hear fire, you know, <laughs> shit like that. Like, like, Combat. Yeah, no. <laughs> I, I want that. I want that song. Ab- they absolutely have to open with that. They need, yeah. they need to play that song. They should like, have Pitbull at, remake the song. At least at least oh, four times. Uh, like Aquaman. Uh, <laughs> oh god. <laughs> well, cool, like, but I'm I'm honestly I'm looking forward to this because I want to see what the new take will be. Because they promised it was going to be brutal this time around. They promised. Yeah. Right. It's so promised. R-rated, right? It's R rating, right? I believe I'm, so. Yeah. They, if they if they live up to their promise, yes, it has to be. Like I want an NC seventeen. I want the brutality. Well, we don't need to go. I know I, I have lowered right. expectations than you, but we at least need to get past the PG thirteen because they promised before this was even in it before it kicked off. Well before the pandemic, they promised. Yes, we promised brutality in this more in this Mortal Kombat adaptation. So that's why I'm excited about it. If I'm let down, then fuck it. It's my own fault, but it's also theirs for giving me a bill of goods that they shouldn't have. Mm -hmm. False advertisement. So either way, we'll see what happens. I'm just looking forward to it because I'm hoping that we get the Mortal Kombat that we deserve. Especially after that amazing game. We deserve this. Yeah. Yeah, the cast looks pretty awesome. Yeah, that too. Yeah. The cast looks amazing. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. That'll be really cool. So next up, we've got the Wonder Woman 1984 virtual premiere. They did this on December 15th. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in a world where there's not a whole lot of movies going on, this is the one big, the last big blockbuster tentpole film that we're looking forward to. Um, it was the next best thing to seeing an actual premiere. Uh, so they had the virtual premiere, lasted about 30 minutes. Uh, pretty cool. They had a Q, they started off with a QA and a uh, with Patty Jenkins and Gal Gadot. And of course, the main cast were on video screens there. Um, it was hosted by Tiffany Smith, who does a lot of the DC stuff. And she's also done some like Star Wars premieres. So she was cool. And she liked, yeah, she liked, awesome. yeah, she liked my Instagram picture of her that's like, cool i took a nice picture of her <laughs> during the live yeah, stream so that was cool. Smith is awesome. yeah she's really cool so yeah i was really uh, it was cool because they kicked it off with kind of like a brand new spot teaser for wonder woman 84 featuring other uh new footage that you haven't seen before um there's this one shot of wonder woman running after like it looks like these this army on like a, a jeep or some tank 
or like yeah, they're like in, in vehicles and jeeps. He's running after them, and one of one of them fires a gun. You see the bullet fly past her as she's running after them, and then she looks back at the bullet. She takes off her lasso, and she tries to stop the bullet or get the bullet out of the way. I think it's headed for Steve Trevor or someone else. She uses the lasso, so like, and I was like, "Holy shit, that looks awesome!" So that yeah, looks- I saw that. I was that looks so good, man. I saw yeah. that part. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, so yeah, they did the Q and A. They had some fans there. They had some cosplayers as well. It was really cool. And then, they, um, they had an actual jam session with Hans Zimmer and his great like crew of musicians with Tina Gao. And just when you thought like you couldn't, you know, Hans Zimmer couldn't make the Wonder Woman theme any better because it's already perfect. Like he actually has an even better, like more uplift, like very like bombastic and positive like this powerful version of it like that that they that they did and gal gadot and patty jenkins was even jamming with them so that was pretty cool um and then they ended it with showing the first few minutes of the beginning of the film like i think like two two to three minutes of it so and just like the first a wonder woman film which shows you you know the um uh the island of themiscira and all the amazons in this they're taking you back there so it looked really cool got me really excited so looking forward to it and then um we also got an update from the uh, justice league from uh zach snyder so it, <laughs> it's saying that after it goes to the mpaa it may be rated r because batman curses he says the f-bomb hell yeah is cut and I think Cyborg even says something. And hmm. then, of course, um, a lot of people were like, oh, Batman doesn't curse and all that stuff. And like, if you read the. Uh, comics, yep, if you read the goddamn comic books. I, I was going to say that, yeah. Every, every time every time he, he looks at uh, his his Robins and like, what the fuck are you guys doing? <laughs> Pretty much. Play the game. If it's, if it's done right and it doesn't feel forced, it'll, it'll be good. Like, yeah, I think it'll be good. Right. Yeah, and then it's not—it's not gonna be like oh, he's just gonna say oh fuck. Yeah. yeah, that would be dumb. Not like that. So you know, an appropriate time for Batman to have said that in B- in Batman versus Superman is when he crashes in his bat jet, and, and, and he is right is about to like fire his freaking. But 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 he said something else. He said oh shit. <laughs> yeah yeah see that that fit like that took yeah. me by surprise but it fit. i was cra- i was laughing because like, oh shit right yeah like, what's he gonna do he doesn't yep. have super speed to get out tear off his his harness or whatever and get off the you know he's gonna get shot but of course wonder woman saves the day so <laughs> with, with 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 the wonderful theme song with, the, with the, one of the best themes i've ever heard yeah for sure exactly. hans zimmer oh. junkie xl baby so also hans zimmer did mention um, his track uh, "Beautiful Lie" at the beginning of Batman vs Superman, he uses it in Wonder Woman 1984. Ooh, I'm like, okay. Ooh, hmm. that's awesome because I love that. Nice. I love that track. So, alrighty, and then of course um, Zack Snyder finally gave an update. Uh, one of the fans asked him a question on when, when the release would be for uh, the Snyder Cut, and he basically said March. And oh, nice. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Is it three fourteen? Um, no specific date. Most likely, it could be, and that he was also isn't is isn't that another another uh, favorite number that he has or three three something? It was three something, right? And two fourteen. Yeah, yeah. So, and then he he also did an update on his Vero. What it was pretty much saying um, he was at the IMAX headquarters and they were previewing the cut for IMAX. So it's most likely going to be in theaters um in imax so Jeez, for a limited Jesus time Christ. and it's yeah. it's great it's crazy how usually we get movies on the big screen first and then you know on streaming to the smaller screens but in this for this film it kind of worked the reverse way where it started out for hbo max first and we're possibly going to be able to see it on the big screen so either right. way i'm excited so we shall find out soon enough, and yeah, I'm, I'm hoping we get a new trailer when Wonder Woman 1984 drops. So we shall see soon enough. Okay. 
All righty. That's pretty much it uh, for the news and topics, unless you guys have anything to add or you want to mention. This is our last episode before Christmas, so... Okay, with that said, I would like to say a couple things tonight before we wrap up. That is one, I have finished season three of uh, The Man in the High Castle, and I am on the final season. So far, so good. A little slow, a little dry, but very good storytelling, very interesting. The next, um, I finished Ready Player Two, the audiobook. It was okay. It was nothing compared to the first The first book. The first book was incredible. Doesn't even compare, unfortunately, because I like the world that he built. It just it was an unnecessary sequel that I did not really enjoy. With that said, it had its moments of, of fun and excitement, and it had its dull moments. Um, <clears throat> a couple of uh, forced... Um, you know, woke moments, so to speak. Um, you know, if, if you're going to do something like, I don't like using that word, but like woke, it needs to fit the story. And in his first book, it fit the story and it was actually interesting and it had a nice little twist. And this one, it was just unnecessary nonsense that pulled me out of the story. And it was just kind of annoying uh, and unnecessary. Um yeah it was okay um so i think that's everything that i wanted to say for catching up because i know if, like if if anybody was waiting on that which i don't know if they were but if anyone was waiting on those results that's all i've got i was interested because i wanted to know what you thought about ready player two and it was now okay i'm kind of disappointed now now i'm just i don't give a shit if you about... got a like like for example if you, get, if you got a credit on um on audible that you just don't know what to spend on go for it give it a listen it, it, it has its fun moments i'm not going to take that away but it's just it's not as good it's not as good as the first one huh? so but yeah anybody else <laughs> yeah I don't know. Lately, like I said, I've I watched The Stand. That was disappointing. Uh, I've been playing Spider... If you haven't played it and you've finished the first Spider-Man, play Spider-Man Miles Morales. It's awesome. I want to, man. I want to so it's bad. So fun. There's a moment in it where you can unlock the end of the Spider-Verse costume yeah. and you go through the world like you are in the Spider-Verse, but the entire world the rest of the world is the game. So you're just, you're, you're, you're swinging like Miles Morales in the spider verse, but in the confines of the actual game. And it's just so much fun. I can't give it enough praise. I will say, I don't know if it's because I have wear and tear on my PlayStation or it was a problem with the game, but there were a couple of times where the dialogue dropped out and it pissed me off because it was at an important moment in the game and i did not like that but other than that the game is fantastic and i'm having a great time with it one of my favorite games of the year next to ghost of shishima i i could easily say that other than that uh, nothing nothing's going on like uh, i'm i'm getting ready for the the event this sunday the tlc event for you wrestling fans i'm telling you this is the event where we're really going to have to band together and give each other moral support because this one's going to be a very, very tough one. So mm. th that that's all I'm that's all I'm at. Other than that, I'm just working on the stand and that. So cool. Okay. Nothing. I, I haven't. Uh, the one thing that uh, my wife and I have been watching is uh, this Korean uh, drama called Uncanny Counter. It's a uh, basically it's like a uh, uh, a group like a uh, a group of people fighting uh, demons or something like that, but they own a noodle shop. So, is that live cool. action or? Yeah, it's like, it's it's live action. It's 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 actually kind of nice. They're like, what, where, is where, where, what is that on? It's on Netflix. 
It's on Netflix. Uncanny What's Counter. Okay. Uncanny Counter. I'm checking it out now because I I just have to I have to check out what you and your wife are checking out. So I'm checking it out now. Yeah. I mean, along with the gods. No, nah, that's never gonna happen. But I'll okay. check out. <laughs> I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying like, that that's something that we we both enjoyed. So. Oh, that's funny. It's uh, it's you know, again, it, it could be a, it could could be a Christmas miracle that you guys end up watching it, but whatever. Christmas but, miracle. <laughs> So like I said, yeah. one lump of coal you're gonna get. No, I, like I said I'll check out on Candy Counter though, along with the with the, with the frauds or gods or whatever. Like I'm I'm not checking that out. So. All mm-hmm. right, that's fine. But uh, yeah, I don't have I don't have anything else. Um, I are we are we doing anything like after Christmas or anything like that? Because I'm probably not gonna be here. I'm okay. gonna be in Colorado. So, gotcha. Ooh. Uh, I'm gonna be uh, oh, oh, hanging out with with, with the with, with the in-laws and. Uh, if if we're wise, we need to do the Batman Returns commentary. Like, yeah, we, that has to be done for our fans. Like, we 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 need to do the Batman Returns commentary. Yeah. yeah why don't we do that after Christmas? That sounds fun. Yeah. Yeah. We can discuss. We'll see it. what happens. No problem. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I got, I got nothing else. Um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll be gone for for from the twenty sixth until the third, I believe. So okay, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna we'll be, be a, fun without you. <laughs> yes, whatever. <laughs> I, I, you know, it, it's gonna be the same, same old shit. Like you know, nobody pays attention to what I say, anyways. So it's okay. Yeah, it's like you know, you're not even here. Anyway, so. Yeah, yeah, it'll be, right. yeah, it'll be good. But it's fine. Like, yeah. But like I, I'll, I'll try, I'll try to be, you know, I'll try, I'll try to see if I can, uh, uh, maybe just download, download it on my phone and maybe just phone it up like a, like Pinhead does or something like that, because they, it's, it's kind of hard if, if there's like a, you know, a couple of uh, toddlers with you, <laughs> like if it's, oh, if it's, yeah. if it's nighttime, it's nighttime, so. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. Yeah. So, well. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what what I can do on on, on that end in that sense. Yeah, so if I, if I don't if I don't see you guys then, like you guys have a wonderful holidays, and I hope everybody you know everybody's in in good health and good graces and all that stuff. So mm. you too, yeah. man. Enjoy Colorado. And, yeah, man. Have a good time, man. Yeah, it sounds like I'm gonna fun. try. There, there's a lot of dispensaries there, so hell yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try not to get too high now. Oh no! Nah, like, blow, you, you toke it up, man. Gonna, we're gonna be Rocky Mountain high. Let's, let's just say that. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, so nah. I do want to mention. I checked out um, this thing called Apple TV Plus. You know, for mm. Apple subscribers. Uh, 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 when did that come out? Is that new? So, um, well, they have a bunch of stuff there that I just never checked. I haven't oh. checked out because you know. I mean, you have so much stuff with Netflix and like uh, Hulu and Amazon Prime and HBO Max. So we checked out the Mariah Carey Christmas special because it oh, was Jesus man. fucking Christ. Oh, no, I'll, I'm going to just treat that like along with the gods and pass. Well, <laughs> we, we want, we've been watching Christmas stuff. So we're like, oh, let's check it out. Let's check it out. So we just checked it out. It wasn't bad. Um, I think it's better than that Mariah Carey Christmas movie. That's for sure. Is a movie too? Oh gosh! Well, oh, an face. animated movie. They made an animated movie um, of her wanting a puppy for Christmas. So my daughter she can buy a fucking. It. She's a she's a billionaire. She can buy a puppy. Now she is. Well, this is like eight year old Mariah Carey in the story. So, <laughs> wow, yeah. Damn. But this is like a few weird. years ago. We're, now we're talking about live action Mariah Carey, um, oh. and, with Tiffany Haddish as the narrator. Um, oh God! Ariana, All I want from- <laughs> Ariana Grande in there. So, oh God! And then moving on, you're uh, watching this, and then you're gonna skip on along with the gods, Mike. I started <laughs> along with the gods, and then I got bored. Oh, <laughs> oh! Or, because you don't oh. like good cinema, that's why. Let me rephrase. I didn't get bored. I just, I just wasn't feeling the story at the time. I guess. It felt, yeah. it felt it felt like it was long. It felt like it was a little long. Like how how far along were you? Like it seemed like forty five minutes to an hour. Oh, that's not even. That's pretty yeah. far. And that's why I'm like, can can we can we move on? Can we like? But but the, no, seriously though, the story is fascinating because the guy that's able, 
the save a kid does he save a kid or save yeah. the kid yeah and then he's got these like spirit um i still want to check it out it's, yeah i just it's wasn't amazing. the right frame of mind to check that out but anyway let me ask you something cool you always harp on us on it. have you seen phantasm yet i've seen it a long time ago and i've seen it since and I've seen it again, and I'll watch it because Phantasm is amazing. Man, now I gotta see along with the fucking gods. <laughs> amazing, <laughs> Phantasm go. is amazing. There like it's go. an amazing movie. All right, now I gotta see along with the gods. So this one is an Apple TV Plus film, an animated film. It's called Wolf Walkers, and this one was really good. Um, it's a traditional hand drawn animation. You can literally okay. see the strokes. And the lines, nice. and it was very well done. Um, because we saw we saw an ad for it on TV, and I was like, "What the heck is that? What's what's going on? What's this?" And then it showed like Wolf Walkers only on Apple TV Plus, and I'm like, "Oh my God, we have that!" Hello. So we checked it out, and my daughter loved it. Leana loved it. Um, so it's basically the story of it's set in the 1600s. You've got this um, this little girl. Uh, English, I think English little girl. They're not, it's a, set, a story set in Ireland, and she, her dad is voiced by Sean Bean. So, hmm. I like Sean Bean. So he's gonna die. Does he, he die? Does. Yeah. Oh, I was just about to say that, dude. I was just about to say that. No. Oh. So here, he, um, here's the description. In a time of superstition and magic, when wolves are seen as demonic and nature and evil to be tamed, a young apprentice hunter, Robin comes to Ireland with her father to wipe out the last pack. But when Robin saves a wild native girl, Mabe, their friendship leads her to discover the world of the wolf walkers and transform her into the very thing her father is tasked to destroy. So hmm. it was, it's a really good story. It was, well, the animation is it's beautiful. The animation is beautiful um, because it's, that, it's, it's not your traditional like 3D computer animated you know film it's hand drawn you can see the lines the colors everything it's well done it is really well That's done cool. so yeah okay. um i i would I, check it out especially if you have little ones around you uh, i got a question for you real quick since we're on the subject have they been promoting or talking any because it's on apple tv have they been promoting yeah. or talking anything about foundation foundation i What's that one? Because that's supposed to be on Apple TV. I haven't heard about that one. Next year, apparently. Oh, <sighs> I haven't heard Woo! about that one for yet. Okay, because it's supposed to be on Apple TV next year. Okay. There is a looks like there's a trailer. Yeah, there's there should at least be a trailer because that like it's supposed to be a huge event for Apple TV. Yeah, it says here like Game of Thrones, Dune. Star Wars level event. For yeah, them. it says here Foundation is an upcoming American science fiction t television series based on a book series of the same name by Isaac Asimov and produced for Apple TV. The series was in pre-production, but on March 12, 2020, production was halted due to COVID-19. In October, production resumed. So hmm. they just, yeah, and then you, you've got Jared Harris, Lee Pace, Laura Byrne, Oh, what a cast. Yeah. Man, so. that's crazy. Sounds interesting. Yeah, it's going to. I just yeah. wondered if there was anything, if they were talking about it. So that's all. Not yet. Uh, as far as, like, I haven't seen anything there, but I'm starting to check out more series from Apple TV Plus. Because um, that's what will make me get Apple TV. I don't care about anything else but but foundation. Yeah. Well, when it drops. I can't do anymore. When it drops, I'll let Neither you know. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, yep, that's um, yeah. There's a series, the the Tom Hanks movie I need to check out, and then there's also For All Mankind, which I, I've heard nothing but great stuff about. That one's like uh, the space race, but they yeah. kind of it's like an alternate history. Yeah. So you've got yeah Joel Kinnaman in there, Chantel Van Satten who played. Um, What's her name? Billy Butcher's wife and the boys. Um, in, the boys. in Apple TV Plus, there's also C, right? The one with the yes. uh, decent Yeah, where everyone has lost their sight. 
except for the, the the new baby. Yeah. By the way, Jason Momoa on his Instagram on Friday, um, he was like traveling somewhere. So in the car, they were playing the Mandalorian theme song. He was like, "Yeah, I gotta get on that show. Whatever it takes, I gotta get on that show." <laughs> like this show's awesome. And I'm like, yeah, okay. "You guys, well, like, that's hello, cool. he'll be on. Cool. He'll be like the biggest fucking stormtrooper ever." Shit. <laughs> Oh, you could, be, you could be a bounty hunter for all I care. Like, oh yeah, he'd be a great bounty hunter. You wouldn't want to waste that guy on a stormtrooper armor. Like, oh, that'd be funny though, because like he'd be just like, I don't care. I just want to be part uh, of the, the show. He'd be look like he'd look like a super Mandalorian trooper or something like that. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the one the one that carries the big the big rifles and shit. Yeah, he could have something like that. Yeah, the heavy gunner or something. Super commando Mandalorian. All right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it was just awesome to see like uh, a big star geeking out about the Mandalorian and like I want to be on that show like <laughs> and then he he had to like take a COVID test because they were traveling so before they got on the plane like they were swabbing him and then his his other friend so but that that was that was awesome well was those cool. are the two shows you want to be on you want to be on Mandalorian or, St- or Stranger Things or both yeah yep hey Pinhead have you so, seen The Wailing yet The Wailing no yeah it's on. Uh, I, th- I think it's on either Netflix or Hulu. It's a Korean horror movie. So I've heard about it. I haven't seen it yet. Let me write it, that it's, down. It's not. Uh, it's not super scary. It's just creepy as hell. So no, I know. I heard about it. I just haven't seen it yet. Oh I'm man. Yeah. Yep. All righty. Well, that seems like that's all we have for this episode. Yep. That's all we got for yous. Thank you guys. We love you, you fuckos. We love you guys. Yeah. Thank Wishing you. Wishing you all a uh, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Go watch mm. Die Hard, you fuckers. <laughs> watch <laughs> Batman Returns. Batman Returns is now. Watch whatever the hell you want. How about yeah. that? Watch the he- whatever the hell watch you Home want. Watch Home Alone. But you got to watch Batman Returns. Hey, hey wait, wait. So I have a question. So is Wonder Woman 84 a Christmas movie because it uh, premieres the December 25th? No, it's not. No, no, that's not. That's not how that goes. Mike, yeah, can no. you? No. no? Okay. No, I, that's yeah. not how that goes. I, I, just wanted, I just wanted to make sure. Like, cause, but, but if there's any sort of Christmas theme in it, but if there's any sort of Christmas thing in it, it's a Christmas movie. Sorry, Kuya, you're wrong. Sure, but so far, I don't see anything that would... Okay. <laughs> yeah, was- I would just say, otherwise. and snow doesn't just count. Seeing no, 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 no. It, it, like it has to, it has to have Christmas, some sort yeah, of Christmas. Pinhead did send me. Mike, a- maybe you, maybe you should send him that a uh, Cinemaskers video that I send you with the Batman yeah. Returns, and I, yeah, that he, was I understand the criteria. And watching that now made me want to even do uh, Batman Returns audio commentary even more. And that's it's, why it's, I want to do it it's now. A like a Christmas movie. So, yeah, I was like, when I was watching it, I was like, whoa. That's why I sent that to you, because I was like. That was awesome. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. All righty. Thank you guys for listening. Um, yeah. We're yeah. going to dip out. <laughs> We're going to go now. <laughs> Pretty oh. much. We're not gonna do the whole social spiel. Just check out the. You guys know where to where to follow. You us. know us. If you're yeah. listening to this, you we know. ain't feeling it tonight. You know what I'm and saying? We're we're someone going. Who listened, someone who listened to this episode for the first time was like, "Oh fuck that then. I'm not gonna follow." That. <laughs> no well, wait wait yeah yeah yeah. I'll I'll stick strong with it. Yeah, we're out of here. Alrighty, you guys have a safe holiday. Take it easy. Take care. Peace. <laughs> Have Merry fun, Christmas. Bye-bye. Merry Christmas. Maligayang Pasko.